morning, good morning, and thank you for joining me on another episode of the Roundtable Talk Show. I don't know what episode we're at right now, but we're almost at 300 episodes. Who would have thought a year ago, or a little over a year ago, on the 30th of March, when we launched this show, we would be here now at almost 300 episodes. But we are, our guests are enjoying the show, our audience is enjoying the show, and I am definitely enjoying the show. I am Sharifa Hardy, the host of the Roundtable Talk Show. Now, before I get started introducing the guests, I'm going to ask you to do what I always ask you to do every day, Monday through Friday, and that is to go out and be an evangelist for the Roundtable Talk Show. There's someone in your media circle. You may not know it, but I know it. There's someone in your circle who needs this information. They need to hear some inspirational journey. They need to learn about business, but they won't have this information unless you go ahead and share the show with them. So if they're asleep, wake them up. It's eight o'clock here in California. Get them up and out the bed. Hustlers and money don't sleep. So make sure they tune in to the Roundtable Talk Show, because as always, friends don't let friends miss out on this incredible show so while you're waking your friends and making that post and sending that tweet to let everyone know we're live i'm going to go ahead and introduce our first guest the amazing miss amanda voltas amanda found Amanda founded Eternal Flower when she was 25 years old while living in the heart of New York City. While she flourished her way through the fashion industry, Amanda knew she had always wanted to run her own business. Having worked at male-dominated companies since graduating from New York's Fashion Institute of Technology, she picked flowers because they make people happy. Good morning, Amanda. How are you? Good morning, everyone. I'm doing really well. I'm actually in my warehouse here in Naples, Florida. I actually live in New York City, but we decided to move the business here this year. And it's been a great choice because the weather here is beautiful. So can't complain. (laughs) Um, May was a really busy month for us. We had Mother's Day, it's graduation, it's wedding season, COVID's basically gone. Um, So it's just been really exciting that things are slowly but surely getting back to normal and business is great again. So I have nothing to complain about. (laughs) Yes, we are, you know, getting back to normal, but I don't, I don't know if we'll ever be back to the old normal. We've developed a new normal, which is great. Yes, but I'm loving the fact that things are opening up. And what interested me about you was the idea of flowers, simply because they make people happy. Talk to us about that decision. Yeah, so I used to work in male-dominated com- uh, companies. I was in fashion. I've sold as seen on TV products, kids licensed merchandise, and I was truly not happy working for male dominated companies. I felt as a woman that there was very little opportunity, especially that I was in sales and wholesale. I just felt like it was really male controlled and male dominated. And there was only so much potential to grow. Um, And I was always a true believer of e-commerce and I kind of just got into flowers. I did a bunch of research and What I love about flowers is they're very similar to fashion, but there's no size and they are perfect for anyone, whether it's for a mom, a sister, a grandma, even a male, Um, you know, flowers essentially make people happy, happy. And it's a product that sells year round. So it's a market that I know that, you know, it was easy for us to grow um, because we not only we don't only have direct to consumer, but we also offer wholesale. We have events um, and different types of opportunities that have allowed us to grow. And all of our flowers last 365 days without water or sunlight. And the secret ingredient is glycerin. Glycerin is something that's used in a bar of candy or soap. And it's um, it creates a wax-like solution on the flowers. I'll actually show you the flowers right here. Um, this is one of our more common styles. This is um, nine gold preserve roses. We call them four season roses since they last all four seasons, which is a full year. And they come in this beautiful velvet packaging with a bow. Um, besides roses, we also carry um, peonies, hydrangeas, carnations, gypsophilia, and plants as well. 
I love it. We don't talk more about that. I have so many questions because mm. I just thought they were just regular flowers, regular old yeah. flowers. These are unique and these are beautiful. But I did have another question in a different direction before um, I go to my next guest. So Amanda, you have a blue chair behind you. Yes. I, I think I need that chair. I think, <laughs> I, think I need it. <laughs> yeah, it's right there. Is that a throne? (laughs) It's a throne chair. It's actually from our um, New York store that we used to have when we first opened, um, which was in 2017. So it's it's been quite some time. And then we decided to focus more on e-commerce. So um, we have a warehouse now. We've had a few warehouses, but now we've just uh, condensed to one. So. Okay, well, I need a throne. So, you know, if you get rid of it, feel free to send it to Long Beach. But I am going to come back to you. I want to go ahead and introduce our next guest, the amazing Miss Shifra. Shifra is an elder loneliness solution and community strengthening expert. Inspired by her 94-year-old Holocaust survivor mother, Shifra left a leadership career in information technology to start and manage Social Bridge, a nonprofit 501c3 organization providing ways to alleviate the loneliness of elders while building relationships between generations. Good morning, Shifra. How are you? I'm very well here in San Diego. How are you, Sarita? I am excited. I'm excited to learn more about your journey, who you are, and what you're passionate about. Um, so I'm passionate about finding solutions. I'm passionate about people. Um, and when I um, saw the issue of seniors' loneliness, even if they live in a senior community, I was hoping to find that someone already has something to do about it and I I can just use their solutions, but I couldn't find any um, systematic solution. And the more I researched the problem, the more I saw it's a huge problem that we're not always aware of. And I, just decided that if no one provide a solution, I need to provide a solution. And the idea that we have is that basically if the community will come around the seniors, like we say, um, we always rally around youth and we forgot about the seniors. If the community will rally around the youth and the seniors, we see it like a sandwich, then the community is the meat in between the sandwich but it can hold much more stable. Um, So that's the idea that we have. No, I love it. I've read the expression and I forgive me, I forgot who said it, but that it says when a senior passes away, it's like a library burning down because they die with all that information and it's not being passed on to future generations. So I love what you're doing. Right. And yeah, the, the seniors have so much wisdom that we dismiss because they are old. And they don't use the technology that we use so easily. Um, So we just say, ah, we don't need that information. But at the end of the day, if we look at last year pandemic, if we would listen to what they did many years ago when there were other pandemics around the world, um, we probably could contain it much better than we did. Um, So there's a lot of information and wisdom that they can share with us if we're just willing to stop and listen. Absolutely. And that's what we're going to do today. We're going to stop and listen to the people we have today in this conversation, and we're going to learn so much. Now, Shifra, I am going to come back to you. I want to go ahead and introduce our next guest, Dr. Jane Marquis. Dr. Jane is reminded daily of the incredible intelligence of nature, nature that teaches and supports us. She believes that to be in harmony with nature and so with our own bodies can bring us clarity, love, growth, and fulfillment. Dr. Jane has always loved challenging herself. She was a Canadian ballroom dance champion, a pilot, a trampolinist, and an equestrian. Woo, that's so much going on, and I'm pretty sure there's more. Good morning, Dr. Jane. How are you? Good morning. Excited to be here. Such fun. Thank you for having me. 
you are so welcome. You know, whenever, especially a woman puts those, I'm like, I'm, I'm pretty sure she's doing at least some, some more. Maybe she's a mom, maybe she's a wife, but these are just the jobs that we do. Right. Yeah. I have twins what? and I have a podcast and I'm a naturopathic doctor and yeah, but you know, I, my message is for people to listen to their inner wisdom and to get in touch with that through nature and intuition. And my story started with a crappy childhood where I really had to question things and go inside to find the answers. And it's led me, you know, step by step into an amazing unfoldment of my life. And that's why I started my podcast, became a naturopathic doctor, believe in mind body medicine so that it's our mind is so powerful and creating our health in our future. And thus that um, I became a homeopath after that. And that's my main message. And I uh, since wrote a very simple book called Empowered Health or Jane's Empowered Handbook uh, that teaches people how to use cell salts and homeopathy in a simple way and how it's connected to the mind, body, and it's energetic medicine. So it's really everything that I've come to believe, but it's formatted in a simple way to help people understand it. Well, I like simple. I always tell people I'm a simple country girl. If you if you can't explain it to a layman, then you don't understand it. You have to be able to explain it simple, simply. So what was the journey like for you that started on this path? What got you here? Well, you know, I think it was the crappy childhood and getting me to go inside to figure out what's next. And even to become a naturopathic doctor, I was really struggling in business at the time. And, you know, putting um, more like my next payment on my visa. And I actually got down on my hands and knees and asked for wisdom as to what I should do next. And two days later, I was walking my dog and just this voice said, you should be a doctor. And three months later, I was enrolled to become a naturopathic doctor. And and, you know, I read Bruce Lipton at that time that taught how connected the mind is to the body. And that was why I fell in love with homeopathy, because it's true mind body medicine. And that's led me to what I'm doing now on my podcast and my new my new book. Well, we're going to talk about your podcast. We're going to talk about your new book. We have so much to talk about. But I just want to go ahead right now and introduce our next guest, the amazing Miss Michelle. Michelle is an entrepreneur with a lifelong passion for physical fitness. As a certified personal trainer with a BS degree in exercise science and fitness and advanced training for special populations, including but not limited to cardiac rehabilitation, pregnancy, children and youth, diabetes, stroke, PBD, COPD, asthma, cancer, hypertension, HIV, AIDS, MS, and joint rehab. She has spent her career providing exceptional training at every stage of a poor person's life. Good morning, Michelle. How are you? I'm great and I'm so honored to be here. It's, it's great to have a few people go before me uh, because I already feel so connected. Uh, Sharifa, with you, with the elderly popula population, that's uh, the majority of my clients and um, I'm serving. Uh, my passion is um, people as well, um, but really felt that um, kids were not being uh, served in the fitness community, that they were really being neglected. There wasn't a, um, a lot of good programming out there. Um, I'm a mom. I have two boys, uh, 22 and eight, and um, just really feel like, um, you know, just as you were saying, um, Dr. Jane, that, you know, the mind and the body is so important. And I believe that, you know, crappy childhoods, you know, you know, that's just not a, a good start. And, you know, so my passion was, you know, I, I wanted kids to feel happy and healthy and have a healthy mind and body. And I felt like if I could provide something for parents to do in the home, where I believe that that's where our habits are learned um, early on, uh, that if I could help parents that weren't fitness oriented, that didn't have um, the training like I do, if I could just say, here's ABC, one, two, three, fitness, it's so easy, teach this to your children, let them feel good in their bodies, regardless of, you know, 
God gave us all different bodies, but we all should love the body that we're in. And I believe that fitness is just a great way um, to do that and to feel strong, not only in our body, but also in our mind. And um, so that's my passion. Um, I, I, I work with people every single day between the ages of uh, 20. Uh, we're, I'm here in Florida State, so I get a lot of the um, uh, the kids that are on campus all the way up to my oldest client right now is 92 years old. And um, I work with a lot of families. I try to set my pricing so that um, one person pays and you can bring anybody you want, your parents, your kids. Um, I, I believe in community, uh, uh, Shrefa. So um, anyway, it's, uh, I just love what I do so much. If I didn't have bills to pay, I would just do fitness all day long for free. <laughs> but anyway, I do, I do, I do have bills to pay. And um, so I also uh, have a warehouse just like um, I love the flowers and, um, and I created um, my first workout and uh, I have a little fitness kit uh, for kids and for for parents um, that have kids between the ages of five to ten and it comes with um, all the equipment and all the programming that you would need um, <laughs> this is my son I'll let him pop in he inspired this program because he's he's such a healthy and, and happy kid this is this is uh, Ms. Sharifa and this is her podcast and um Anyway, we, we shot all kinds of videos with kids in our neighborhood, and, um, and it's a 12-part a series with all the programming, and you learn how to strengthen your body from the earliest age possible. So this is my passion. I'm so thrilled to be here. Y'all are amazing so far, so it's so nice to meet y'all. <laughs> It's nice to meet you. It's it's never easy going first. So every no one ever wants to go first. So after a while, people get to see the rhythm. But I want to see the the weights again. Are they made a little lighter, a little different, specifically for children? They are, and I actually worked with um, when I had that idea. It was it was actually a Sunday um, back in March of uh, 2018, and I was laying there with him and just so just feeling so blessed you know that that he has such a good start in life you know parents that have come around to him for, to, to protect him and just to make sure that he's involved and that we're watching who his friends are making sure he's reading and he's he's educated and um and so i started you know i said i want i know that there's parents that want the same for their kids and so i'm you know um and so I'm going to provide that for them. So I started working with um, all kinds of kids. I put them through the, the programming that I put together. So my weights, my kits come with um, dumbbells, actually the real deal, because I don't feel that kids need dumbed down fitness. They are littler bodies, but they are made up of all the same things that we are. They've got bones that need to be strengthened and muscles that need to be built and, and flexed. And um, so yes, their weights are lighter. Um, my age five to seven kits come with uh, two and three pound uh, dumbbells. My age uh, eight to 10 year old kits come with threes and fours. So these are um, fours. Um, and you know, kids are all different, just like people are all different. My 92 year old actually uses my twos, threes and fours, you know? So it's funny how we kind of do this and then we come back to this. And, um, and, and so, People have been asking me, will you please make senior kits? And I said, yes, someday I will. But right now I've got to get these out to the kids and, and um, then I'll do some senior kits. But yes, fitness is just modified and it's modified all those things that you read um, that I serve, all those different people with all their different things coming to me. Exercise is the same. It's just modified and it's just brought to wherever the level that, that the person is that I'm working with. Wonderful. I love it. I love it. We are going to come back to you, Michelle. I want to go ahead and introduce these two lovely young ladies who came together to make this world a better place. Ms. Amy and Brittany. They are founders of Strategy Maven, a digital marketing agency that recently launched last year. Yes, mid-pandemic. They both came from toxic work environments prior to launching their business and are happy to share their stories and experiences. They love chatting about marketing, business, entrepreneurship, and the journey that comes with it. Good morning to Amy and Brittany. Hey, good morning. Good morning. Thank you so much for having us. This is such an amazing panel of wonderful, strong women. So it's super exciting. Yes. How are you today, Amy? I am well. I'm a little sick. As you can, I don't know if you can tell I'm stuffy, but. <laughs> we can't tell. We can't tell. <laughs> Good. 
Brittany, how are you? I'm doing really well. Excited to be here. This is this is really amazing. Wonderful. So I always find with partnerships, whether they're platonic, business, whatever, there's usually the talker, the leader, and then there's usually the background, paperwork, doing all the work kind of person. Maybe I'm wrong, but I kind of feel like Amy's the the talker. She's (laughs) she's the the, the one out there. Am I wrong? No, you're not wrong. (laughs) You nailed it. (laughs) So Amy, tell us about your business. Tell me about what you do and what you're passionate about. Yeah. So um, like you said we own a it's a boutique digital marketing agency and we mainly specialize in three things um one of them being social media um marketing the next one being email marketing and then the last one is um seo which is search engine optimization and um yeah those are um when we first started it was really hard because we wanted to do everything and um, all aspects of marketing and business, and we had to narrow it down to our favorite things, and that's where we landed on, and we love it. Do we love it, Brittany? Yes, yes. We've been, we freelanced for years before we got together and formed our entity, and um, we kept in touch a lot through the years and decided it was the, the right next step, and it's been amazing. It was definitely what was meant to happen, so we can serve our clients way better now to different strengths, so it's really amazing. Mm-hmm. Why are you passionate about SEO? I love SEO because it's so measurable. Um, there's so many components to it. It's like a puzzle every time you go into an SEO project. And I love doing the research on the business and then applying things that that show results later. It does take some time, but I really enjoy like the puzzle piece aspect of SEO. It's really fun. Mm-hmm. Amy, do you enjoy the pu- puzzle piece aspect? Yes, I do. It's very interesting. So SEO is actually more of Brittany's thing, um, but I've learned so much from her and it's super, super cool. And it's like one of those things that most companies don't really focus on or pay attention to. And it's really important. Mm -hmm. So what's your thing? If your thing is not SEO, what's your thing? I love content creation. I'm a very visual person. So I love um, graphics and social media and making things pretty. (laughs) So that's, that's my, my favorite part. Okay. So we, we just got you a hypothetical client and we're going to use Michelle's new business as this hypothetical new client. What, what were your thoughts? And when Michelle was telling you about her new product and getting out there, if this was a consultation with you initially, did anything come to you? Yeah. Oh my, well, first of all, I followed her Instagram. Let me pull it up. Oh, my first workout. Um, and I love it because we, Brittany and I actually both came from the fitness industry. Um, so we were very, we're very familiar in that aspect. So, um, I didn't take a look at your page yet, but so far from what I hear, it sounds like an awesome, awesome business. So thank you. Go ahead, Brittany. I'm sorry. I was just saying her website's really amazing. The way it's set up, it's really nice. Thank you. Yeah. So I like unique businesses, unique stories. Now, Shifra, I want to go over to you because one of the things that stood out with Michelle earlier is, right. is this idea of, okay, go ahead, Shifra. You know what I'm talking about. Uh, yeah, I totally know what you're talking about. And when Michelle said that she working seniors and young people and people ask her about why you don't doing kit for seniors, my thought was, oh, you can use the same kit And actually, if you know that you have clients in the same household or neighborhood or something, really to pair them down or pair them up um, for seniors and kids, they're using the same kit. You just put a different name of it on it, and then you really give them purpose. The children will help the seniors doing their exercise. And the seniors can give their wisdom to the kids. So really to use your tool to bring the bread to the sandwich. Well, you know, and that's really was another piece to why I did it, is I just feel like we're lacking as a society and things, especially with parents, to really connect. There's so much technology, which is a, is, is a good thing, but it, it doesn't help to bring people together. So I thought my, my workouts 
kids can't do them on their own. They have to have a grandparent, a parent, uh, a caregiver, a big brother, a big sister. You know, my, my son's brother is 22, so he could do, and I, my goal was to bring the family unit together. And, right. um, and so that was just another piece that I just thought, you know, I connect so much with my clients and they tell me things, you know, I really almost need to go back to school and get a degree in counseling because the things that they tell me and they want to talk through, I wish I could help them more, you know, but sometimes that's really, you really are helping just by listening and being a safe person, but um, kind of funny, but maybe not. My, one of my clients, um, the one that has the 92 year old mother that we work with, he wants to title it my last workout, my seniors kits, but I think that might not be a good idea. What do you think? <laughs> I was like, no, I don't oh. think you can do that, David. <laughs> no. <laughs> they, joke. They, they joke with her. And um, yeah, so anyway. <laughs> no, but I did agree with Shifra when you first said it. I was like, well, just rebrand it, put on a different sticker. Yeah. But I, I didn't say anything because I figured there's a method to your madness and I let people do what they do. I want to go back over to Amanda real quick. We were talking about the flowers. And one of the questions that was in my mind when you said, that the flowers last 365 days. And when any business or product gives me a specific time, I'm like, how do you know it's 300? And, why not 366 or 364? Like, how do so you they, know? They can last um, essentially even up to three years, but it really depends on where you live and how you store them. So if you keep them in regular, you know, air conditioned temperature, they can last over 365 days. We just don't want to guarantee it. Um, because if somebody lives in Florida and they turn off the AC and there's a lot of humidity, they're not going to get more than 365 days. They're probably going to get just 365 days, 366 days. Um, so yeah, so we just keep it at, at that. And we also want them to, we want customers to buy more flowers from us. We don't want, we don't want to say, okay, they're going to last two years and say they only got a year and a half out of it. So 365 days is, is the best uh, method. Amanda, you admitted that out loud in your outdoor voice. I did. It's like we're not telling the people they'll last for three years. We'll tell them they last for one year so they have to buy more flowers. Exactly. And it depends on how you maintain them, you know, and if you keep touching them because they're, they have glycerin in them, they may not last you three years or two years. So one year is a safe bet. Yeah. Amanda, one of my clients has your flowers and I don't know if you're the only one doing this, but they're purple and they just rave about them. They show them to me just about every time I come in their house, they're like, look at my flowers. They're still beautiful. And it's so true. I mean, they're amazing. We do have competitors in the market, um, but are, are, do they live in Florida? Because Florida is one of them. Okay, yeah, yeah Florida is um, our top three best-selling state, so it is possible that they're from us. Yeah, they're, pur they're purple. They're in a round, big thing uh -huh. like this, and they sit right there, and they're just, they're amazing. They, they, they tell everybody about them. They just, they love their, their flowers that last forever. They say they last forever, though, so I better... Yeah, I mean... You can, we can, we always say too, they can last forever, but they don't last forever. <laughs> so, they do last longer than, than fresh flowers though. So that is forever. <laughs> Amanda, I have a question for you. Um, so how do they compare to when you purchase fake flowers? You know how fake flowers kind of collect? Yeah, so they are, they are real flowers. So the roses, the peonies, the hydrangeas, the carnations that we carry, um, they are coated in the glycerin. So we get the flowers from Ecuador and Colombia and the process is done in the, in the flower farm there. Um, and then it's delivered to our warehouse here in Florida. And then we redesign them in packaging. We have paper, we have acrylic, we have wood, we have ceramic glass packaging vases. And um, they, essentially don't come with the stem of the flower. So when you buy fresh flowers, they're normally with stems. So right. the head of the, the rose or the peony is coated in the glycerin and then it's added to the vase or the packaging, so to speak. Um, so it's just, a, it's a very different process because they don't require water or sunlight. Actually water will destroy them. It will dissolve the glycerin that's on them. So the glycerin is what protects it. It's like, um, 
it's like putting nail polish on your nail or putting something on your nail to prevent it from breaking. Like, like it hardens it, so to speak. Wow. Yeah. Dr. Mm-hmm. Jane, have you seen anything like that in nature? No. <laughs> no, but I was thinking, I love it because I find it so sad when I get a bouquet of flowers and then they die in five yeah. days <laughs> and I have to go throw them out. So I'm, I'm all over this. <laughs> wow. I love it. Dr. Jane, you work with people on mindset, correct? Yeah, yeah. I, I really, I really believe the mind is very powerful. Mm-hmm. And I so, feel the body and, and what happens with disease is a mirror of what's going on in the mind. The way I take a case is to address the unconscious mind and the programs that run there as a homeopath. And when I break that program, the circuit that's causing a lot of stress, then the body heals because the mind is and the body are not as stressed. It's incredible. So I see it in action too. When do you see it in action? I I want an example. This is intriguing to me. Yeah. So I I see it every, every time I take someone's case with in like a homeopathic case. And um, I learned a technique from Divya Chambra, who's from India and what we do is ask, go into the unconscious mind to find the circuits that's causing the stress. But then when I give a homeopathic remedy that addresses that, I see people get so much better and like their mind is freer and their physical symptoms get better. So So you hypnotize them? Hmm, potentize? Are you working working with hypnosis? Yeah, homeopathy, homeopathy. When you say you got it, you going into the subconscious, is that through hypnosis or how do you get into the subconscious? Yeah, no, it's through a technique that we use that um, goes into the five senses because that's how the unconscious mind is programmed. And so finding the pathways in through fear, food and dreams, actually, because they're the most connected to the five senses. And then there's and you, you know, there's a map that's drawn as you go and you find the clues as to how it matches a homeopathic remedy. And then you give the remedy that treats like with like and cancels it out. And over time, the circuit is broken. I hear what you're saying, Dr. J. I think the question, and and correct me if I'm wrong, Shifra, that was being asked is that what I think what you're answering, Dr. Jane, is the result of what you're doing. I think Shifra was asking, are how what are you doing physically in the session in order to get to the subconscious? So with hypnosis, people are they sit down, they say some things, and they get them into an altered state of consciousness. So when you're doing um, your session. Or what are you physically doing? In a way, it's similar, but we go in, you know, in the outer spiral. So with the five senses, and then as you go in, they start to talk in this, um, in a way that makes no sense. It's actually in the unconscious mind with the um, describing the actual remedy that is needed. So in a way, it's very similar to um, hypnosis, but it, with a technique that just brings them to that place through the five senses in, in a nutshell. I don't know if that answers it enough. I think it answered a little bit more because I'm rather intrigued. I followed the whole Edgar Casey, you know, sleeping prophet and how he came up with the different remedies. So I understand a, a, a bit of it. I was just trying to figure out, I think Shifra and I, we, we were doing this together as a group, as a team and mm-hmm. trying to figure out the process during your session. So I want to go over to Brittany real quick. So Brittany, we heard, we talked to Michelle about her new product. That's you know, it's it's not out there. We talked to Amanda about her flowers. She has forever flowers that last actually one year. But when you have new products like this, do you get excited? Do you want to go and tell this story and, and automatically see like campaigns in your head on how to make this work? Yeah, absolutely. So that's that's one of the best parts about working with different companies and different people is getting to hear their why and how they came to 
um, their idea and their vision and their mission and being able to tell that story through digital media. And it's an incredible, it's an incredibly rewarding field to be in, to be able to do that for people, especially women owned businesses, because like mm -hmm. ourselves, we are women owned business. So it's been awesome because even since COVID more women have stepped out and started their companies and it's so great to see it. And it's really good to be in a place to support that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So Shifra, what you talked about the seniors, what have you seen? I mean, it's, it's, it's bad enough when you're, you know, a senior and you can't move or can't go out, but then you, add on top of that a global pandemic. You know, you had seniors sitting in the house, having left the house in 16 months. What are you seeing? How have you been able to help them? So when the pandemic started, um, it was interesting because I was watching what's happening in Israel and they were like, two weeks ahead of the United States with re the reaction. So I had almost like a, a, a window to the future, really to see how they react in order to understand what is going to happen here in the United States. So on March of 2020, um, basically it was just the beginning before we got into a, a lockdown and before it was really accepted as a pandemic, I went on TV and I said, look, we are getting to the situation. And there was just to start talking about senior to stay home and not to go out. And I went on the TV on local news and I said, we have to make sure they are okay. So during that whole year, I basically called neighbors to go and check on their older senior neighbors. And at the same time, recruited a lot of volunteers to go and do the shopping for the seniors. So seniors will have someone that they see on at least a weekly base using the shopping and of course using all the safety issue uh, precautions. Right now, we're all going out, even in California, I think June 15, we're allowed to take the mask off everywhere. Um, so people going back to life, going back to socialize. But the pandemic of senior loneliness started way before COVID. It, COVID just shined the light on it. And I think the problem was because um, we are so focused on the future, we forgot the past. But at the end of the day, we don't have any past, any future without a past. And my belief is that we need to educate the youth about the importance of the seniors. So in five, 10 years, no one will need social bridge because it will be obvious that if you have um, the if you have a seniors in the neighborhood you can just go and ask them how they are then they will not be grumpy they will not be annoyed and we will all live as one big community mm, that is so beautiful and i believe that we will get there michelle i want to go over to you in response to basically the same thing what did you see and how was your business affected and the people around you during this global pandemic where many people couldn't go out and couldn't get together well i'm very blessed um in one i have a mobile fitness business i don't own a gym my gym is in my home um when i had my son cole um i serve a lot of a lot of clients and and I became mobile and I started my own place in my home. So I never had to miss a day of work because when you are a coach to somebody, which is essentially what I am, you can't let them down. You can't say, oh, by the way, I don't vacation very often because people expect me to be there. And that's one of the, the reasons that I'm as successful as I am is, you know, my programming is, is great. It really is, but you can, you can pick up programming anywhere. There are lots of great exercises 
what I offer is that is the accountability. You know, I, 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 I want to be there for, for my clients. Um, and I genuinely care, you know, I don't just take your money and if you're not doing well or we're not working, we don't stay together because I genuinely care, you know, about your, your health. Um, so the pandemic, um, I never missed a day of work. I never, um, you know, it was a, a decision that my family, we all made to continue to allow people into our homes. I believe that fitness and your immune system, and we're blessed here in Florida, you know, I'm, I took the route of, you know, sunshine, vitamin D, magnesium, your, your diet is very important. Um, and as well as your relationships with people. And I said, I'm not gonna isolate my clients. I need them working out. I need them healthy. Um, no one ever got sick. I still have not gotten sick um, yet. I believe I will because I'm human and we all get sick at some point. I'm not saying that I'm you know, any different than anybody else, but I wanted to continue to serve. And that's a decision that I made in my business and I respect everybody in the decisions that they made. Um, my product was able to help people. Um, it happened to be there at a time when people, and I've always said this to parents, what about when your kids don't play sports anymore? Did you know that by the age of 13, 70% of kids drop out of youth sports? Do you know by the age of 15, it's up to around 80 to 85? What about when, you know, so what about when they're not playing sports? What about when they start taking more and more PEs out of school? What about when a child doesn't have a safe neighborhood like my son does to go out and play in? What about, what about, you know, you've got to have a plan B. And so my product, you do it in your home. It comes, you do it with a parent, you do it with someone in your home. And so it, it helped my product actually. Um, and my business, uh, we created another line. I believe that, you know, in business, you have to have lots of lines out. So when one is maybe not doing as well, you've got other, I've got other lines out, you know, so I'm mobile, I have my home gym, I have my product, and now I have Zoom, which is awesome, and I've got clients in, like, around the country now, like, North Carolina, I'm Zooming, you know, one family, the, the 92-year-old, at one point, they were all in different parts of the country, and I had six of them on my screen, and they were the, they were a family, all separated but they were all together so zoom's been amazing for me um and so uh, business has been good because of the pandemic i want to say that my heart has been breaking um because my passion is kids and one thing that i've seen whether here in florida even though we have been been very protected is i feel like this has really done a disservice to our seniors and to our kids have really been affected in our business owners and it breaks my heart, you know, because my son in the environment he's in, he's gonna be fine. I will continue to make sure he's educated. He has food in the fridge. He has air conditioning, heat, a blanket, bed to sleep on. Who is affected by this the most is the child, children that don't have safe environments. They don't have education. They don't have food. And they relied on that in, for, in school. And by shutting our schools down, um, my heart would break every day. And so even though me and my family, we were fine and we actually flourished. My husband has a, a very essential business. I was sad because just because I'm doing well, I can't do well when everybody else is not doing well too. So that was, that was, I hope that answers your question. <laughs> it, it, it answered my, my question immensely. Amy. What are your thoughts on what Michelle had to say? Yeah, I mean, she's she's right. It's it's really um, sad and upsetting to see so many people affected. Um, we so I came from the fitness industry. Brittany did as well, and they were hit pretty hard, especially if you were um, like an in-person facility. Um, we were closed for many months. I mean, we are in Louisiana, so it wasn't as strict as most places. Um, but we definitely saw that trend. Um, and for us, as far as like our business, we're online. So we don't know anything else other than COVID. We started during the pandemic. So um, we don't really know or we haven't seen like a pattern of like what's working and what's not. But <clears throat> for the businesses that were affected, I mean, it's, it's sad, but it's also an opportunity to kind of 
um, reevaluate and see where you can grow from there. And um, a lot are seeing the importance of being online more and having that social presence, working on their email marketing and their SEO. Um, so that's kind of my thoughts on that. What made you decide to start a business in the middle of a global pandemic? <laughs> um, good question. It Honestly, we didn't even factor in the pandemic. It was just we were both at a place in our lives where we were very like unhappy in what we were currently doing and super ready to start and branch off on our own. And Brittany and I had been talking about it for years. And I don't know why we thought like mid pandemic was a great idea, but um, it, I don't know. It just, it just sort of happened that way. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's like now or never. Is that how it was yeah. for you, Brittany? Yeah. Um, it definitely was the way everything played out, um, you know, in my career, it was just the right time. It just happened to be the right time. So ironically, yeah. yeah. Mm, sometimes it is like that, but I think Dr. Jane, one of the things that, that we see is that everything happens in, in divine perfect timing and with the right mindset. What have you seen over the last um, almost two years now? Yeah, um, I totally agree with Michelle and, you know, and to remind ourselves that our children are programmed from the time of zero to seven. So the thoughts that we feed them, the fears that become big, that's going to translate into their adulthood. So we need to be really careful of that. And what I saw when this all broke out is the fear, massive fear that was happening with anyone. And I realized that I wasn't afraid because I had all this knowledge that I'd built for a long time. And I trusted my inter inner intuition as to how to handle it and what was best for me. And I thought, I feel that people have lost touch with that a bit. So that's why I started my podcast that's empowered, I N powered. So, you know, going inside for the answers and why I wrote my handbook, which just starts to teach the connection between our mind and the body and give some really powerful tools that people could start to use so they realize that they have more power than they think. So that was my reaction. What are some of the tools? Can you, can you give us any one real quick? Yeah, I want to give one quick story of one of the homeopathic remedies that's in my book. It's Ignatia Ayamara. And it has the, the story has the mind-body connection attached to it. So when my my girls were small. One of them had a terrible cough. It was so bad that she would vomit. And it went on, you know, for quite a while. And I was a home, I was learning homeopathy at the time. And I gave her remedies that were very much cough that were related to cough, but nothing worked. And finally, I was like, oh, I have to take this little girl's case, which is what I, and this is such a simple um, way of explaining the mind body connection. So I put her on my knee and I said, so what's going on? What's bothering you? And she said, oh, well, I've, I have a situation at school and I've been grounded and I can't go out to the place where we're building a fort and it's really bothering me. And I said, how does that make you feel? And she said, sad, mommy, so sad. And so I knew that I had to find the remedy that had cough but attached to sadness. And the remedy is Ignatia Ayamara. And it's one that really helps treat grief, sadness, and it can have this hysterical cough when we're feeling very sad. So it's one of the remedies in my book. Oh. And I hope it helps many. <laughs> Okay, you can't just leave us like that, Dr. Jane. We were on the edge of our seat. So what did you do? Like, what was the remedy? <laughs> So the remedy is Ignatia Ayamara. It comes know, like okay, it's a homeopathic it remedy. Be, Let me you, show you what a remedy okay, looks thank like. Thank you. Help us out because I'm all intrigued. And, you know what I mean? Like, because I do it wrong. That's why I like instructions. This is what yeah. you need to do. So remedies are homeopathic remedies. They, they come like this. There's different potencies. And it started 200 years ago with Hahnemann. And he takes something, we take something natural that exists on earth and potentize it. And it comes in little pellets. So 
Ignatia is, is from a plant and it's made into a homeopathic form through potentization, bring it down to what they say, nothing exists any longer, but it's energetic in form and nano. So when I gave this remedy to my daughter, the cough was done in 10 minutes, never to return. That's how quick it gets into the cells because of this nano what we call nanotechnology now, but when it's when it was first created, nobody knew how it worked. And that's one of the reasons that a lot of people don't understand homeopathy, how it works, because they say there's nothing in it. But it's one of my favorite topics on my podcast as well. So thanks for asking. Absolutely. You can tell by your smile that you enjoy it and that you love it. I was just trying to make sure how to do it correctly. I, I see that in a lot of um, halls or like um, throat lozenges, they'll say it has echinacea in it. Sharifa? Yes, ma'am. Could I ask Dr. Jane kind of a controversial question um, um, about the vaccine? Um, Dr. Jane, how do you feel about the vaccine? Like if you're coming from natural, because I'm, I believe very much like you do very, um, I don't like to take any medication at all. Um, so could I get your opinion on how you feel about a vaccine? If, if you're more of like a natural. Yeah, I, I believe in my oath, which is first do no harm. And um, we've been directed by Health Canada that we can't speak for or against vaccines. But this one I would say is experimental. And I, that's why I did my podcast and my book because I feel like you that with the right nutrients, the right support that will be just fine. Mm -hmm. that we don't need to go to a, an experimental, possibly harmful solution. I hear you. I hear you. Excellent question. Thank you for asking. This has been an incredible, incredible show. We are coming down to the last few minutes of the show. And what I love to do at the end of every show is just simply allow my guests the opportunity to speak directly to the audience, to everyone who is watching this show live, as well as everyone who is watching it in the archives, and let them know what you want them to take away from your appearance here today. And we're going to start with you, Brittany. Oh, great. Um, so I would like to just say that if anyone is out there that is struggling with their digital media, um, if you feel like you've got great content, but you're not getting the, the reach that you, your mission that you had planned out to be, um, reach out to us. We're here to help. I'm happy to talk with you. Um, we do focus on organic methods. So we focus on all things that are not under the paid umbrella. So feel free to reach out to Strategy Maven. Yes, thank you. Amy, what do you have? Yeah, one thing I'll add is don't skimp out on your email marketing. Those are your hottest, hottest leads right there. And we find that uh, companies neglect that. They just want to like post on social media when they have like a gold mine right there um, of their hottest leads. So don't forget about that. Mm, yes, thank you. Amanda, what do you have for us? If you are unhappy and if you want to be more happy, buy some flowers. Um, <laughs> and if you are really happy, send somebody else flowers because it will make their day. Even a small little rose or um, a little peony will, will definitely brighten up their day. And uh, especially if you add a little note card from yourself. What's your site? What's your, how do you it's, do you do it? It's www.eternal, E-T-E-R-N-A-L, Fleur, F L. E U R dot com, eternal dot com. We oh followed you on Insta. Thank you. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Michelle, what do you have for us? Well, I just want to say thank you, Sharifa. Um, you started your podcast on my birthday, actually, it's March 30th. So, um, it's just this has really been one of my favorite podcasts of all the ones I've done over the since I started um in for three years. And um um, I, I want to leave parents, I want to leave um, caregivers, anybody that uh, comes in contact with a, a child um, to remember that their habits and that they're just, they're watching so much and that um, 
to make sure that their their habits are are started early in life and um and fitness is one of the greatest ones if you can get one thing in your life in order then so many of the other things fall into place your sleep um your relationships the quality of relationships with people um that it goes into the foods that you eat and so um I, I believe, you know, in fitness, you know, it just helps your mind. And um, so it's just a really good one to start with. And, um, and so I just would just leave uh, parents with or, or caregivers, um, don't neglect um, this important area of, of life. And um, I have a special code today, Sharifa2024. Um, we'll get you 20% <laughs> off one of my kids' fitness kits at myfirstworkout.com. And um, I just, I'm so privileged to be here. And really, you're so right, Sharifa. Um, I'm so I'm so honored to meet all of y'all. Didn't even know you existed in, in the world. And I'm so, I'm so rooting for everybody and your success. Really, really awesome. Thank you. And we are rooting for your success. That's amazing. What you're doing is incredible. I definitely applaud you. And it's interesting. You, you mentioned I launched the show on the 30th of March last year on your birthday. The only reason I launched it on the 30th of March was because that was the Monday prior to my birthday, which is the 31st of March. So okay. I was like, ah, I love Aries. Yes, yes. <laughs> Aries, good, good people definitely love them. Thank you for being here, Michelle. And thank you for that code. Yes, it's Sharifa2024. That's what we want to keep in everyone's mind. Thank you, Dr. Jane. What do you have for us? Oh, I wanted to say thank you to everyone too. And Sharifa, I love what you did. You know, when something happened that didn't work out, look what you're doing now. And I think that's the message I have for everyone. And to really, you know, have that inner power and know that we each have a contribution to bring to this planet. And so that's what my podcast is about. It's empowered mind, empowered health, and my handbook helps people empower themselves with information that can just, you know, take away that fear and get that inner strength that yes, I have the answer. Yes. And got to pick up a copy of your workbook. Oh, yeah, it's not out until July. I just did the final edit, but it'll be on my website, empoweredhealth.com as soon as it's out. Thank you. You are so welcome. And then you have to come back in a few months when it's out so we can actually talk and invite people to pick up a copy of your book. I am so excited. This was a wonderful show. I appreciate each and every one of you being here. I wanna thank you for being today's guest on the Roundtable Talk Show. And I especially wanna thank everyone who tuned in to watch this show live, as well as everyone who was watching it in the archives. Just because you didn't catch the show live does not mean you're not important. And we still don't need your support because we do. Whether you're watching this show too days from now, two months from now, or eight years from now, it doesn't matter. Please go ahead and share the show and support our guests. Our guests are here this morning to share their journey, their business, what they've um, been experiencing, their strategies, and their tips. So please support them. Their website link is in the Facebook post. Follow them on social media, reach out to them, send them a message. And when you do, please let them know. Sharifa Hardy says hi. Now, if you're interested in more ways that I can help your business, or maybe you want to be a guest on the Roundtable Talk Show, please visit my website at asksharifa.com. Until tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. Pacific, everyone have a safe and a blessed day. Bye now.